I don't know whether cultist is the right word, but they, they had, even for those days, what was seen as an eccentric and extreme form of religion. The date when these people uh, started to arrive here is 1694. And they followed this young man, age 21, Johannes Kelpius, who led them because it was believed that the American wilderness was the best place to locate themselves waiting for the second coming of Christ. He was a very mystical, pious young man, and so he led this group even though he was only in his 20s. And they came over from Germany and settled around the area now, Fairmont Park. But he was always teaching, preaching, and praying, but also living as a hermit for much of the time living a very austere lifestyle was the best way to personally prepare him and to lead his group to expect the events of the end time. Now, the title of their group, The Society of the Woman in the Wilderness, comes from Revelation chapter 12. One of the visions in the book of Revelation in the Bible is of the birth of the Messiah. A woman driven out to the wilderness gives birth to a baby and the dragon almost snatches the baby but is defeated and the woman hides with her baby in the wilderness. The image of the wilderness as a place of expectation rather than just a place of danger, uh, was important to them. So finding a real wilderness to wait in um, was probably the symbolism that made Pennsylvania seem appropriate religiously, but I'm pretty sure it was just the reality that Pennsylvania was a safe, the safest place for them to practice and live out their beliefs. After he died, the group fell apart um, and his cave basically became abandoned until rediscovered by Rosicrucians who put up a, a stone marker near the cave. Um, and the cave has been sort of, I don't want to say prettied up, but at least it's neater. It is very hard to imagine somebody choosing to live there for years, uh, but he did. Leaving space for unconventional religions is part of the heritage in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and in this country. And rather than assume they are dangerous and deviant, um, we ought to at least give them the benefit of a doubt. Think instead of all the really unconventional religious groups that have made a real contribution to life here and just the texture of American life.